Welcome to One on One, the Daily Item's weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is Sunbury Pools and Playground Director Ron Pratt, interviewed by reporter Rick Dandies. How can your summer memories last for the next six years? With a new Kia from Sunbury Motors Kia and up to six years interest free. Welcome to another edition of One on One. This week uh, we're speaking with Ron Pratt, who is the Director of Operations uh, for Pools and Playgrounds in the City of Sunbury. Ron, uh, good to have you here today. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, you and I have spoken before about some of these issues, but mm-hmm. I think uh, this being the uh, you know in the middle of the summer when right. people are going to pools, and also uh, there have been some pools that have closed, no, most notably uh, Nori, and I, and I know you you run a very successful operation. Mm-hmm. Let's begin by talking about some of the basics of what what people want to be attracted to a pool. It, it's no longer the case where you can just have a pool what they call a flat pool with no amenities. Right, right. Uh, it, it, talk a little it, about that, if you will. It's hard, it's hard uh, to grab people's attention because the, the, the generation that we're in now is, is the me generation, and I want to have it now generation. So we have to focus on the different amenities that people want. And one of the things about our pool that's unique is the fact that we've got a lot of different amenities in our pool that cover a lot of different age groups Mm -hmm. from uh, toddlers with our baby pool. Uh, We have two basketball hoops for our older kids and we've got a climbing wall that covers all age groups. Uh, So if you look at our pool and the way it's designed Mm -hmm. and we've got our two major slides which are more geared towards our teenagers and our our young adults, it's geared towards all different types of age, age ranges. So we can cover families, we can cover teenagers, we can cover toddlers, we can cover a whole bunch of things. So if you don't put those amenities in, and as you said, just have a flat pool, we're not really attracting anybody to our pool. Uh, we try to have things that are going to attract all different age groups. And, and not only that, on top of that are families as well. On top of the amenities, the basketball hoops, the slides and things like that, We've got to give people a place to sit. We've got to give people what they want. And, and that's just a matter of talking to people and finding out what they do want. Well, that, uh, that brings me back to when you first started. You, you had told me that uh, the pool lacked those amenities. So how did you begin uh, filling the void, so to speak? Right. Well, it, it's, it's interesting because in 2004 when I took over the pool, uh-huh. I, did a, I did an analysis of the pool. Uh-huh. Uh, and my analysis was I, I walked around the pool and, and I took notice to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. The one thing that did stand out to me was our pool, if you look at our ice rink, is a, is a tan wall. And what I noticed, the very first thing I did notice was the fact that we had benches that were tan as well. So the benches camouflaged themselves to the wall. The second thing I noticed was I noticed that there were kids in our pool. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing. But who were bringing those kids? Grandparents, daycares. And we only had one place for them to sit, and that was under our pavilion by our concession stand. Yeah. So that put nobody out around our pool. And when you have nobody but in one location, they can't see what all you have to offer. So what I had to do was I had to find a way to put those amenities into our pool and get people going around our pool as opposed to just sitting in one location. So we put up pavilions. We put up, we bought chairs. But the one thing I wanted was I wanted chairs that were colorful. Psychologically, when you walk into something and it's colorful, Mm -hmm. it cheers you up. You become happy. And and that's a proven fact. So we we decided that we were going to put color around our pool. The color was to match our slides. So we had blue and red. And that those were that was going to be our furniture too. So the other thing we had to think about was kids. Well, what do kids want? So I started asking kids what they wanted in our pool. What were some of the things that water parks had? What were some of the things that other places had? Well, it just so happens I took a trip to the Great Wolf Lodge. I noticed kids were playing a lot of basketball in the pool. And it hit me, why can't we put basketball in our pool? Yeah. So 
uh, we did not want to make our basketball hoops permanent. So what we did was I found a, a company that made water-filled basketball hoops. So that's that's where the basketball hoops came from. Was actually an idea I got from a, in a, a large water park. If I don't take the ideas from the larger water parks, which are drawing the people, and put them at our pool in a smaller form, I'm not going to draw the people to our pool. It studies show that after five years, if you do not do something to your pool, you start to lose people. Yeah, you constantly have to. Uh, you have yeah. to constantly reevaluate what you have, what you're going to do, what your plan is in five years from now, three years from now, whatever it's going to be. So that's why you you constantly see us doing things to the pool and updating things here and there. So, and that was the whole purpose behind the climbing walls too. As a matter of fact, I, again. Did my research. I, I decided that I needed something else. 2008, we decided to put our climbing walls in. It gave, at that time, if you realize, at that time, fitness was a very big thing. I wanted something that was going to hit that aspect mm -hmm. of, of the, the people coming to our pool. Mm -hmm. We put the climbing walls in. It was a fitness thing. Fitness was big. We were the first pool in the area to also introduce Aqua Zumba, another fitness activity brought into our pool. Uh, unfortunately, not too many people are qualified to teach Aqua Zumba, so we sort of lost our instructor. We'd like to bring it back if we can find somebody, but again, it's a matter of just finding the things and the niches that people want in their community pool. Because in reality, it's a call to community pool for a reason. It's there for the community. So you got to give them what they want, not so much what you want. Yeah, the one thing I noticed what you're saying, and it's true with larger pools because I've you know, I've written a lot about mm -hmm. large pools around the country. Uh, and it's the same at every level. Is they all want to reach all the demographics. Right. Um, if you, some of the larger places, they can actually have a large kids' pool and a baby pool. I mean, you are somewhat restricted by uh, both finances and mm -hmm. space. Right. But I like the idea of taking. Uh, certain aspects of a water of a water park and mm -hmm. bringing it down to a community level. It's something that I think all the community pools in this area would be wise to heed. That right. kind of a right. And 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 that's the thing. The one thing is you got to listen to your community. That to me is one of the most important things. I can visit water parks, which I do all the time. And a lot of times, if I go to the beach or if I go to, like I said, the Great Wolf Lodge or somewhere up in the Poconos then I've got to take their ideas and bring them back and see what people are doing and see what is a very popular aspect of pools, especially these indoor ones. Mm -hmm. We are competing with Hershey Park. We're competing with the Poconos. We are, we are competing with those. Even though those guys are an hour and a half away yeah. and we are sort of outside their circle, we're still competing for their attention. And if I don't put something at the pool and we don't do things at our pool to, to – draw those people in then they'll go to those larger water parks and pay the amount where we try to keep our costs down and affordable so that people can come see our pool so you really appeal to the families and seniors and all that do you have senior programs now or we have we uh we have uh, senior discount programs for our for our members to come in uh -huh. uh, we have lap swim for them we we got a lot of uh, discussion from people that would like to have lap swim. So we put our lap swim back in a few years ago. So we close our deep end off so that we have lap swim. We have a gentleman from Elysburg who has been a, a patron of ours for years mm -hmm. uh, and comes back every year, travels all the way from Elysburg just to do his lap swim. So we appeal to his needs and his wants. And, and we've had many people after him that have, again, wanted to do some lap swim. They find that the outdoor water to be a little bit more refreshing than the indoor water. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back. We're speaking with Ron Pratt of uh, Sunbury's uh, Director of Operations for Pools and Recreation, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. Get 0% financing for up to 66 months on 2018 Kia Forte, Souls, Nero, Sedona, and Cadenza. Own a 2018 Kia Soul or 2018 Forte for only two twenty-five dollars a month for 66 months. So Welcome back to One on One, uh, Daily Items weekly digital interview program. We're speaking today with Ron Pratt, the Director of Operations for Pools and Playgrounds, City of Sunbury. Uh, Ron, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was uh, because you run a successful operation uh, in a small community with limited finances, how you get the community involved, how you get the business community involved. 
Uh, if you can talk a little about that. Yeah, it's really interesting because we have a vast amount of businesses in our community that are untapped. Uh, a lot of the businesses that we have come into our pool uh, are, are friends of mine that have made contacts over the last 14 years. Uh -huh. And they want to be a part of the community. Uh, some of them don't want to do the advertisement part of it through billboards, things like that, or, or, or other places. So the, in the last three years, we have developed a sponsorship program where they sponsor a free day at our pool. And actually, that does two things. One, it gives their business name in a place mm -hmm. where it sees a lot of foot traffic. And our, in our pool, in a daily basis, we'll see over 100 people. When those 100 people talk about that business, it expands to 200, and then 200 expands to 400. So that business name is getting out through eye yeah. and foot traffic. Win-win. It's a win-win. It's a win-win for us. Yeah. It's a win-win for them. So we put their name, when they sponsor a day, we put their name throughout our entire facility. So again, visual, foot traffic. Two of the major advertising things that people don't realize are visual and foot traffic. And people advertising through just word of mouth. Greatest way of advertising is through word of mouth. So we get their name in there, they get their name out into the community. So in the years, it has really ballooned into, the first year we had two sponsors. This year, we are up to 11 sponsors. Wow. So it, it has been a very successful program in the last three years. So in, in some of the businesses are extremely uh, an important aspect of Sunbury. And they want to be heard and they, and they want to be a part of the community. And this is just one way that they can be a part of our community too. Yeah, the promotion days. Uh, so do you, uh, in addition to the free days, you run other promotions? Yeah, uh, well, we have, we have uh, a lot of different, different types of, of promotions that we have aside from our free days. Uh, sometimes, some days, a lot of times, you'll hear me get on the, uh, get on the radio and, or get on the speaker and I'll have uh, trivia questions and we'll give out local business mm -hmm. uh, certificates, things like that. Again, it's just another aspect to draw those businesses in make people have fun as opposed to a flat pool just another aspect of you that can't, so, you, you can't survive just no you cannot you can't survive by no. opening the door and saying no. come on in no i can't here. no if if i don't have something for people to have fun with yeah. i'm not gonna people aren't gonna come there's we've had in the past where we might ask for a, a, a donation of a canned food and we'll take it down to Haven Ministries and you get half off your, your admissions. Yeah. Donations and things like that, promotions like that, uh, a, a lot of times we have, uh, we'll buy extra ice cream uh, if we can get a good deal at one of our local sponsors. We get a good deal, uh, paid admission gets a, gets a ticket and they get a free ice cream. So we do a lot of different promotions like that. Again, it's just another way to pull people into our pool and, and, and let people see some of our, our amenities that we have. If we can get one new person every day in our pool, again, it goes back to what I just said, word of mouth gets out. Hey, did you see the pool? Boy, this is really nice. And you know, I can't, I can't commend our staff enough. We have an excellent staff from our snack bar people to our lifeguards. It's really... I may be the face of it, uh -huh. but those guys are the workers. Those guys are the ones that make our pool what it is today. Our lifeguards, our concession stands people, and our maintenance people. Those are the big three that really – what you see is because of those three well, they have of people. the one-on-one -on -one interaction. They have the one-on-one -on -one interaction, and, and, and our policies and procedures, they follow to a T. So with that being said – those three groups of people really make our pool what it is, and uh, along with the sponsors that have jumped on board with us and say, listen, we want to be a part of this. Absolutely. And then once you get them in, then you want to uh, hit them with social – you want to talk a little about social media. Absolutely. Once you get them in, in the pool or in the area. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Social media uh, – people don't realize this, but there's billions of users on Facebook. Facebook has been an absolute excellent advertisement for us. Mm -hmm. What I do is I, I bring these businesses in, but then I'll blitz social media uh, through Facebook with their logo, mm -hmm. their name, uh, the things that they're doing in their businesses that may not get out. But then my post will get shared three, four times. Well, there's another six, seven hundred, maybe eight hundred people. And again, going back to what I had said, visual, word of mouth, 
foot traffic is going to get the name of this business out there. I'm constantly saying with these businesses coming in, please go to their business, shop at their business, buy at their business. They're doing something for you. Please give back to them because these are all local Sunbury businesses that have given back to our pool and they're really giving back to everyone that comes through our door. Yeah. So I encourage these people to visit these places. So it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's uh, it's the it's whole a whole range. It's, it's of... a wide range. It's such a wide range of social media. And, and the thing about social media is, and what's so nice is, it's free. It, it, it's a free advertisement for us. It's a free advertisement for them. You know, if, if you go back and you think, and, and I'm a, I'm a very psychological person because the mind is four times stronger than the physical body. And the more you put a name in somebody's brain and you keep blitzing social media with it the more it becomes ingrained in their brain. And when it comes, oh, I remember that. That was, it becomes a part of who they are. So if I can continue to blitz social media with these business names, people have a tendency to want, oh, well, they sponsored the pool. Let's go there. Let's go here. Oh, I remember he posted that he did this for us. Let's go there. You know, and I, I encourage these people to visit these businesses. But social media is a billion person using site. And, it's, it's and with that, it is. I, I'm always getting, uh, you know, Instagram photos from friends all over the country. Oh, yeah, I went to this place. You right. know, I went swimming here with my right. family. And it's uh, the kind of promotion you can't, right. you can't really buy these and, days. Uh, and a lot of times, I will not just type words. I put visual pictures in because you have to hit two groups. You have to hit the visual people and you have to hit the people that like to read. I try to hit both. I want people to see what we're doing, but I want people to read what we're doing as well. Uh, let me just ask you one more a personal question. Did you have to have to learn all this stuff? I mean, did it come naturally to you promoting? and? Well, uh, honestly, uh, it, it's, it's stuff that I've learned over the last 20 years. I've uh -huh. been doing this for 20 years. And what I've learned is over the last five years, people are very visual people. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to social media, when I start blitzing social media with these things and I start putting posters up and I start – the more our name is out, again – the more it gets into their brain. I, 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 coaching football, high school football as well, I've realized that the the more you do things over and over and Repetition, over, it yeah. becomes ingrained in people. Yeah. You know, it becomes muscle memory for them. And, and in this case, it becomes visual memory for them. They see the logo of Wise Markets. They see the logo the, the, the logo of Juji's. They see the logo of Domino's and, and, and Wise Markets and Service First and Extended Arms and State Farm. And they see those logos and then they want to go there because they realize that they're a part of our community. Okay. Well, you run a great operation. Thanks for talking about it. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, join us again next week for another edition of One on One. Thank you for watching One on One. We hope you will join us this coming Thursday at noon for an installment.